we should be hopeful that this is a simulation because otherwise... Do you know that in 1970, British mathematician John Conway created the game of life? Despite its name, it's not a game you play in the traditional sense. Instead, it's a zero-player game where you set initial conditions and watch the simulation unfold according to a few simple rules. Once you set it in motion, the game runs on its own. Some patterns die out quickly, while others continue indefinitely. This idea sparked a thought. If such a simple simulation can produce complex behavior, what if we scaled it up to the size of a universe? A simulation that includes galaxies, planets, and life. More intriguingly, if such a simulation were possible, how could we know we're not already living in one? Initially, the idea that our universe could be a simulation sounds far-fetched, but when you delve deeper, it becomes more plausible. We perceive the world through our senses, creating our own subjective reality. This personal experience is based on our sensory inputs and brain activity. However, proving the existence of an objective reality, one that exists independently of our observations, is challenging. Objective reality would be a reality that exists regardless of whether we observe it or not. But proving something exists without observing it is contradictory. Consider this. Can you prove anything outside your own mind is real? This question touches on the nature of reality and consciousness. Babies provide insight into this as they develop object permanence, the understanding that objects continue to exist even when not perceived. Before about one and a half to two years of age, babies don't grasp this concept. Playing peekaboo with a baby, for instance, reveals that they believe you disappear when you cover your face, only to reappear when you uncover it. This developmental milestone shows that the belief in a continuous, objective reality is learned over time. However, even as adults, our belief in object permanence is part of our subjective reality. We assume things exist when we're not observing them. But can we be certain? It's our consciousness that allows us to observe and interact with the world. For example, we know that all matter is made up of atoms, but we can't see them without a microscope. This means that atoms, and by extension, the reality we accept, are only observable when we have the means to perceive them closely. This observation can simplify the concept of simulating a universe. Simulating billions of galaxies over billions of light years would require immense computing power. However, a more efficient approach might be to simulate only the conscious experiences of the beings within the universe. If everything we perceive is part of our subjective reality, a simulation wouldn't need to render the entire universe in detail all the time. It would only need to simulate the parts that are being observed by a conscious mind at any given moment. This raises an intriguing question. Could the people we interact with daily be complex functions within a simulation? If our consciousness and perceptions can be simulated, how do we distinguish between real beings and simulated ones? The idea that our universe might be a simulation is an intriguing and mind-bending concept. It's based on the notion that just as video games only render what the player sees to save computing power, our universe might do the same. This means that if no one is observing a particular part of the universe, it might not actually exist until it's observed. This is similar to the philosophical question, if a tree falls in a forest and no one is around to hear it, does it make a sound? In a simulated universe, if no one is there to witness the tree falling, it might not make a sound, or even fall at all, until someone observes the scene later. One argument supporting this idea is related to the progress of technology. Over the past hundred years, technology has advanced significantly. If this trend continues, it's conceivable that we could develop computers with nearly unlimited power. This would allow us to create highly realistic simulations. But generating these simulations would require an immense amount of energy. This is where the concept of Matryoshka brain comes in. Imagine the Russian nesting dolls, but on a cosmic scale. If an advanced civilization could build enormous structures around a star to capture its energy, it could harness enough power to run countless simulations of entire universes. These structures would layer around the star, capturing all its energy output. If this civilization replicated this process with multiple stars, they could potentially simulate many universes simultaneously. 
Currently, we already have projects like the Illustrious Project, which simulates the universe on a large scale using current computational power. As technology improves, these simulations will become increasingly accurate, possibly to the point of being indistinguishable from reality. However, even the best simulations will always have limitations. For instance, the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle in quantum mechanics tells us that we can never know both the position and momentum of a particle with perfect accuracy. This suggests that any simulation would have inherent imperfections, unable to perfectly replicate reality. To manage these limitations, a simulated universe might use various tricks to conserve resources. For example, if you try to run a complex video game on an old computer while doing many other tasks, the performance drops because the computer can't handle all the demands. Similarly, in a simulated universe, high-energy areas like black holes might be designed to slow down time to reduce computational load. This could even explain why the speed of light is a constant. It might represent the maximum speed at which the simulation can process information. Thinking about our universe as a simulation can also shed light on questions like the Fermi Paradox, which asks why we haven't found signs of other intelligent life despite the vastness of space. If we are a simulation, maybe other civilizations aren't simulated at all, or we simply haven't encountered them due to the constraints of the simulation. Our awareness of the universe might be as limited as deep-sea creatures' awareness of the world above the ocean. Just as these creatures have no concept of the land, sky, or outer space, our understanding might be confined to what our simulation allows us to perceive. This could mean that our observable universe is just a tiny part of a much larger reality. Or it could be all there is within the simulation. Perhaps the universe cannot exist without conscious minds to observe it. This idea suggests that the universe needs observers, like us, to be real. Another intriguing concept is that of simulated universes, which could explain the multiverse theory, the idea that there are multiple or even infinite universes. Near-death experiences, NDEs, add another layer to this discussion. Many people who have had NDEs report that their life flashed before their eyes. Researchers from Hadassah University in Jerusalem analyzed numerous NDE cases and found that most people lost all sense of time during these experiences. One person said, there is not a linear progression. There is a lack of time limits. It was like being there for centuries. It happened all at once. Others mentioned experiencing different events simultaneously, even though their human mind later separated them into distinct occurrences. Another individual described being able to feel the pain of every person they knew, understanding their struggles as if living another life. These experiences make it seem like people step into an alternate reality where time doesn't exist in the usual way. This state allows them to analyze life in a way that living people typically cannot. This phenomenon might be connected to the feeling of deja vu, where you feel like you've had the same conversation or experience before. Maybe, in another universe or simulation, you actually did. The concept of free will comes into question here. What if every decision we've ever made is pre-programmed into a simulation? Each choice could branch off into a parallel universe or simulation, leading us to this exact moment. Current technology, like the advanced robots and machines used by companies like Tesla, surpasses human performance and speed. Biological neurons in our brains operate at about 200 hertz, while modern microprocessors work at around 2 gigahertz. That's much faster. A super-intelligent AI running on faster hardware than the human brain could think of every possible outcome and choose the best one. However, we are not super-intelligent AI. Our brains have limitations in what we can observe and understand. Despite these limitations, we've made significant discoveries, especially in math. Math seems universal, with numbers and patterns appearing in everything from atoms to galaxies. These discoveries allow us to ask profound questions, like whether we are living in a simulation. If we were to put billions of possible simulations into a hat and pick one, what are the chances we would select the original universe, the one that created all the simulations? Perhaps an advanced alien species found traces of our DNA on a dead Earth and created a simulation to learn about our history. If that's the case, then hello, alien observers. We may never know for sure. All we can do is observe and hope that our game of life is one that we can win. What do you think? Could we be living in a simulation? Let us know in the comments below. See you on the next video. Bye.